Hey guys! I'm sorry about all of this. This is just a random corner of my bedroom by a window because I already shipped my lighting to Miami, but anyway. These are my last few days in my house, so there's like nothing left in my room. I don't know if you can hear an echo because there's literally nothing in my fucking room. But I wanted to make this video not only because it's Tuesday, but also because some shit went down a few nights ago. I had tweeted that I got a very interesting drunk call from my ex-boyfriend. Well, not my ex-boyfriend, just you know, just a guy that, you know, is like kind of serious, like whatever. I hate when you don't know what to call someone. You're like, were you my boyfriend? Because like, I remember I cried a lot about you and like a bunch of shit went down, but like, I don't think you were ever my boyfriend. I can't remember. This is the army guy for those of you that know about him. If you don't know about him, I spoke about him in my love life update video, which I will link down below. And I explained how I've known him since I was like 18, 19. And then we tried to date and he had commitment issues and it was horrible and I really liked him and then he finally admitted that he loved me and then eight days later he left for the army. Me being me, I didn't just say, okay, well, you're going to the army so this isn't gonna work. Like, no, I didn't say that. I, I totally did not say that. I should have. But I didn't. I basically told him like, okay, if you really love me and I know that I love you, not like love love, but I definitely have like a lot of love for this individual and I could totally see it growing into something that was like a true love. I told him, all right, let's fucking do this. And for three months I wrote him letters and he couldn't talk to me over the phone. He didn't have his phone in basic training in the army. So that was three months of letters. And then after the three months, it was two more months that he switched from basic training and went somewhere else to AIT training, I think is what it's called. I don't know. And in that training, he did have his phone, so we would FaceTime a lot, we talked a lot more, and then I eventually made plans to go and see him in Virginia. So I flew to Virginia, and I visited him, and then I realized while I was there that basically he was just really, really bad at affection. He was just real bad at it. Like we went to a theme park and I went with a friend and he brought three friends and the entire time he didn't talk to me. He never even rode a ride with me. He told me that I was pretty, but like over text message cause he couldn't even tell me to my face. Like he's really bad with affection. I remember my friend telling me like, dude, if you hadn't told me, I wouldn't even know you guys were dating. In private, it was a completely separate situation, but like in person, he just doesn't know how to be like affectionate in any way. The entire time that I was in Virginia, we never even kissed on the lips. And you guys know how much I love kisses on the lips. That was heartbreaking. So whatever, it was very difficult, but I had to make the decision in Virginia that, listen, you're gonna be gone in the army for five years. That's how long your contract's for. And what's gonna happen? You're gonna come back after five years and automatically be better at being affectionate? Like, no, we don't have the time to work on this. It's not something that I can hold on for, just hoping that you can be a, just a more affectionate person. It's not like I need him to be holding my hand or kissing me. I don't I don't really like PDA either, but it's like, I mean, I would like it if you acknowledge that you know who I am. That would be cool. Sorry that this is getting kind of long, but I want to explain the backstory for those of you that don't know it. It was sad, but then I went back home and we didn't talk for a while. He texted me on my birthday and said happy birthday. We actually spoke a few weeks ago because I was in Miami and his best friend is in Miami and his best friend is friends with all of my friends. That That's a confusing sentence. But whatever, I was in Miami and I was with his best friend and it reminded me of him and so I texted him. And then I came back to LA and I texted him again because I was cleaning out all my shit to move and I found all his letters that he had sent me and then we started talking about that But that was it after Virginia. He never like tried again Like he had told me oh just let me try and I'll show up for you and all this shit But um once I said no, he never tried again. He never uh, put forth any effort. He never told me he missed me Um, yeah, it just it wasn't he didn't try after that which is fine. Whatever. I honestly was not like sad about it I haven't been sad about it, but then the other night happened and that's what brings me to this video. I got a call from him, which was very fucking random because he doesn't call me. And it was really late his time because he's on the East Coast. And I was like, uh, is he drunk? But he doesn't get drunk because he's been in the army and they couldn't drink in like the beginning months. And I said to myself, he has to be drunk. So I picked up out of curiosity and sure enough, he was drunk as fuck. He hasn't drank in months and whatever. And so he starts telling me, mommy, mommy, Mommy! That's what he kept saying over and over again, which is like kind of jokingly what he would call me. It's not like he really called me mommy, like ill, but like as a joke, he calls me mommy. So he was like, mommy, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, you're, you're fucking, you're fucked up. And he's like, no, I'm not drunk. And then I could hear in the background that one of our mutual friends was with him. And I was like, how are you with him right now? He goes, I'm in Boston. You should come. Can you please come to Boston? To which I was like, 
No. I said to him, I'm like, I'm, uh, you're drunk. I'm not going to Boston. And then he started getting really serious about it. He's like, no, I just, I'm serious. Like, I really am tipsy. Like, I drank tonight and I haven't drank in a while. But I'm telling you, can you make it to Boston tomorrow? I know that that's a lot to ask. I know that that's not something that's fair for me to ask. But can you please be here tomorrow? I kept telling him that he was just drunk. He didn't really mean it. Whatever. And he insisted that he wasn't, that he did drink, but he wasn't drunk. And... I'm such an idiot. I hate that I'm putting this all out there, but I guess it's kind of interesting and kind of funny. Not this part, but like the whole thing is kind of funny. I basically um, started looking for flights as I was on the phone with him, but I didn't tell him that. I was just looking up flights because I was like, uh, yeah, I'll fucking go to Boston tomorrow. Fuck yeah, I will. Mind you, in the middle of my move, in the middle of everything, dumb ass Jesse decides that it's a fucking good idea to look for flights. And he kept talking and he's like, please just let me show you. If you just give me one shot, just come here. I will show you. I need a real woman in my life. I've been to all these bars tonight and all I could think about is you and you're the only fucking real woman that I know. And my goodness, like, just please let me show you. I want to be with you. I need to be with you. All this shit, okay? Telling me all this shit. Then his friend grabs the phone, who's an older guy, and I've known him for years too, and he tells me, hey, he is drunk, but I do want you to know that he has not stopped talking about you tonight. Like, he has not stopped talking about you, period. And we both know that that's not the type of person that he is, and he's just, he's fucking crazy about you, dude. Like, he really cares, and he's not good at showing his fucking emotions, but he fucking cares. And in the background... This is so stupid. In the background, I heard this guy, the army guy, say, oh, I just need to get her pregnant. I just, I should just get her pregnant. Fuck, I need to get her pregnant. When I heard that, I was like, what? He is not that type of person. He does not want to get nobody pregnant. He hates commitment. He fucking hates all that shit. To hear him say that was like really, really intense for me. Like I was like, okay, I know he's drunk, but he doesn't say shit like that. And so throughout all this process, I'm looking at flights and I'm listening to this bullshit go on. Both of these people that are drunk talking to me. And once army guy gets back on the phone, we talk very briefly before it just cuts off and the call ends. And I call right back and his phone was off because it went straight to voicemail and I was like, okay and then I sent him a text message that said phone died with a question mark and I did it on purpose because I knew his phone had died but I also knew this kid okay I knew that no matter what he said even if he really cared about me even if he meant all that he said I knew that he wouldn't talk to me the next day and so I sent the text message which didn't go as delivered but I knew that when it would go as delivered it would be like when his phone turned back on I'm a little crazy. And mind you, before I say the rest of the story, I did tell him during that phone call, I was like, you know better than to just drunk call me, right? You know better than just to say all this bullshit if you don't mean it. He was like, of course, I would never hurt you. Like, I'm not saying this to hurt you. I just care so much about you. And I just, I need to be with you and all this shit. And then the next day I waited until it was around seven or 8 p.m. his time with obviously no response. And the text message had gone through. And I just said, let me actually read what I said. I said, do you think it's okay to drunk call me and say all that you did last night only to not speak to me at all today please just stop erase my number stop hurting me take care and then he says mind you at seven or eight his time hey Jess I actually just woke up I've been sick all night and my phone died I was actually going to call you now I wasn't trying not to talk to you and I said okay then he never talked to me again here's the reason why I'm making this fucking video because honestly my last video that I made the whole I'm single again rant kind of helped me and just being able to vent it like I don't want to make my channel channel about drama surrounding my dating life but I think that my last video actually helped me realize that all of us are fucking going through the same fucking dumb shit it's stupid but it's cool to be able to talk about and not in a way where I'm like super hurt because I'm honestly not hurt about this it's just so interesting to me I am at a point in my life where I'm just so fucking sick of showing up for people who just don't show up for me and I and, I'm, and I refuse I fucking refuse once I had time to think about it I was not gonna go to Boston but I felt stupid even looking for the fucking plane tickets like I felt dumb even going there and he told me oh just give me a chance and I'll, I'll show up for you and, and, and I like I did give you a chance I flew to fucking Virginia who flies to Virginia for anything no offense I flew to Virginia and I did show up and guess what you didn't so what I would have told him the next day had he talked to me would have been listen thank you for saying all that you said last night I know it's hard for you to open up but um, I'm in Miami if you ever need me and if you want to show up Here's my fucking address, and you can come and knock on my fucking door. But I'm not gonna take another step in any direction for someone who literally, literally has not taken one step for me. But yeah, that's what happened. So my ex basically wants to get me pregnant, 
and I lived happily ever after. Don't be fucking selfish. If you're not good at showing your emotions, then go do that shit in a corner by yourself. Don't ask someone to show up and put up with that shit when really, I could find someone who's just good at showing their emotions from the get-go. I don't need to put up with this shit. But anyway, like I said, I'm not hurt or I'm not even like sad about it, to be honest. I thought it was an interesting story and I like to share my dating stories or random shit like this that happens to me because I think we all, like I said, go fucking through this shit. But anyway, that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel because I put out new videos every Tuesday and Saturday and I will see you on Saturday. Bye! Well, no, what I'm saying is like, you did have like plenty of sex like while we were dating, right? Yeah. Okay! <laughs> um, I mean, I, I'm gonna be extremely truthful. Like, no, I, I mean, I, finally. I, I mean, no, I, 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 it doesn't, like, whatever. I'm, I knew it already, but like, yeah, okay.